the TT Artisan 50mm f1.2, an all-metal APS-C lens for under $100. I've been using this with my Sony a6100 and my Sony a7S III, and here are some of my favorite shots. Similar to the other budget manual lenses that I've been reviewing over the past couple weeks, with this TT Artisan, we have a really nice, kind of hefty, all metal build. And from my test, I found that it offers pretty good value for certain photo and video uses. From my test, it performed pretty well. And when you know the pros and cons that I'll discuss throughout this video, you can decide if this will be a good addition to your kit as well. I think this could be a good choice for someone looking to pick up a cheap manual lens that offers good low light performance, shallow depth of field, and they don't want to spend over $100. If at any point you want to learn more about the gear that I use to make these videos or this lens specifically, you can use the affiliate links down below and help support the channel out. When it's attached to Sony a6100, it matches the look and feel of the camera pretty well. It doesn't look that out of place like some third-party lenses tend to. While most of you will probably be looking at this lens for photography, as you can see from the examples I've shared, you can also get really nice video quality out of it as well. And even though this is designed for APS-C cameras, I actually spent most of my time using this lens paired with the Sony a7S III, which is filming me right now. That said, on a full frame, vignetting is of course gonna be far more apparent, especially when you're doing stills. But what was most surprising to me is when I was shooting 4K 24 FPS, the vignetting is hardly noticeable, if at all noticeable. It's only until I go to 4K 120 that I was starting to notice more of that vignetting. For those shots specifically, I usually cropped in on the clips about 113% to hide it. Another thing that you're gonna wanna keep in mind if you are gonna use this on a full frame, which I don't necessarily recommend, I primarily got this for the a6100, but I do use it on the a7S III as well. But the thing to keep in mind is it tends to have a lot more warpiness, especially if you're doing fast panning movements. So keep your movements to a minimum or use this in a static position if you're gonna be using this with a full frame camera. But to be fair, I'm probably the only one crazy enough to be trying to use this lens for video on a full frame camera and to actually enjoy it. But sticking to the basics, at its core, the functionality of the lens is really good. In addition to a really nice and smooth focus ring, we're greeted with a click stop aperture ring, something that a lot of other budget manual lenses tend to lack. As you can see here with my current favorite manual lens, the 35mm f1.2 by Pergear, this has a lot of things going for it, but the one thing I really didn't like about it is the fact that it's a turn aperture ring as opposed to the click style that we have with the TT Artisan. 
When you're shooting manual, and if you haven't done so before, the one thing that you're going to notice right away is you don't have any kind of indications or control on your screen. So the camera itself cannot digitally change the settings of the lens and you're not gonna be able to see what settings you're using on the camera itself. And so being able to quickly tell and switch to the various aperture settings that you want on the fly without having to be like, what am I at? Or to accidentally, as I've noticed, can happen really easily is when you're shooting, especially if you're manually focusing with another lens like this one, it's very easy to accidentally also change your aperture without knowing. One really interesting quirk to this lens is something I haven't actually seen or used on any of my previous lenses is that it comes with a cover that turns rather than snaps into place. The one benefit is that it's very unlikely that your lens cap is going to come off versus these, if you throw it into a bag, especially if it's tight, something brushes up against it, it's actually rather easy for these kind of lens caps to fall off. So that could be an advantage, but when you're just trying to shoot quickly, I like the ability to just put the lens on and take the lens cap off as opposed to this, could you potentially miss a shot with that setup? Maybe other notable specs on the TD Artisan are it weighing about 340 grams. And compared to the Per Gear, it's a good amount heavier. And compared to my Sony 50mm f1.8, which does offer autofocus, it's actually about twice the weight. It has a minimum focus distance of 0.5 meters, which is about one foot eight inches. Not that impressive. In contrast, the Sony 50mm f1.8 OSS, the APS-C version of this lens, so not this one, because this is for full frame, has a minimum focus distance of 0.39 meters, and that's about one foot three inches. Also isn't great, but you can see the Sony native lens, which does offer autofocus, is gonna be a better lens for macro shots. Another important thing to keep in mind, especially if you're new to APS-C cameras and you don't really understand the difference between full frame and using the smaller APS-C format, is that this is a 50 mil lens, but when shot on an APS-C camera, it's gonna be equivalent to a 75 millimeter focal length. And so if you do want something close to a 50 millimeter for APS-C cameras, that's where in my previous review, I actually recommended the Per Gear 35 mil because what did that equate to? Like 51 or 52? I think it equated to like 52.5. The answer is 52.5. Okay, so I was right, 52.5. So this is very close to what a 50 millimeter full frame would be on a full frame camera. And so the downside to it being a 75 versus a 50 is it's a lot harder to get certain shots, especially in my experience when I was shooting some street photography, there were certain corners and angles and objects that I wanted to get in frame that even stepping back as far as I wanted to, I couldn't. For example, there was an alley or wall behind me or a car. It just wasn't really feasible and I couldn't really get the shots that I wanted with the TT Artisan compared to when I did the same shot using this lens. But I think one of the major reasons people will be getting this lens is because of that f1.2 aperture which of course offers you better low light performance as well as subject separation and bokeh and while it's pretty happy with the results i got from this lens it's not perfect i would consider this more of an artistic or fun weekend lens not something that i would do or rely on for professional work and so there are a couple of reasons for that i'm primarily using this lens for when i'm shooting a podcast that i produce and edit for mia and her co-host brie called diagnosing horror and if you haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, it's a great one and I totally recommend it. They take your favorite movie monsters and characters from your favorite horror films and they treat them as patients and give them diagnoses for what goes on during the film. It's definitely worth a listen and if you wanna learn more, you can check out their link below. So in those examples, using the A6100 with this lens on a tripod and that far corner over there actually works out really well for this studio space. I want it to be a longer focal length. The other advantage of using this lens is I usually have it at f1.2, f1.4. As you can see behind me, I'm not very far from my wall, but I wanna be able to create enough subject separation between them sitting up here and the wall so it looks more blurred out. But like we were saying earlier at this $99 price point, of course there are gonna be a couple compromises that you should keep in mind before getting this, as well as keeping in mind while you're shooting with it. In comparison to some cheaper manuals that I've tested in the past, they would be pretty susceptible to vignetting, especially at their higher f-stops. Luckily this isn't the case, but there is still some between f1.8 and f2. You have to kind of go past f2 if you wanna keep that to a minimum. 
Another pro is that center sharpness is actually pretty good even wide open. Corners not so much, but again, that's to be expected with this lens. And of course, you, if you compare this to a $400, $500 equivalent 50 mil, you're of course gonna get better IQ and center sharpness and overall sharpness with those compared to this $100 manual. But something I did notice is wide open. It tends to have less contrast overall. And again, you have to go past F2 2.8 in order to get more of that richness back into your picture. Another interesting note though, in that F1.2 to F2 range, is the shape of the bokeh. If you look closely, you'll notice it's not really that round. It actually kind of looks more almost like gear shaped as opposed to one kind of circle that you typically get with your bokeh. It still looks pretty, but I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to want that more traditional look to their bokeh shape. And if that's the case, between f1.2 and f2, you can't really avoid that. But aside from that, and perhaps the biggest issue, at least for me, was the chromatic aberration. Even at the center of the shot, there was definitely very noticeable chromatic aberration. A lot of, whether it was trees or corners of buildings, the purple and green fringing was definitely very apparent and pronounced. I found that stopping down didn't really help that much either. So, so for those kind of shots, be aware that it's not really avoidable. On the positive side though, I noticed very little distortion. It of course becomes more obvious when you have a surface that's clearly supposed to be straight you've got your edges, rectangular, whatever. That's where you're gonna notice it a little bit more, but I think it's well within the acceptable and usable results. And when you take it into Lightroom or Photoshop, it's a pretty easy fix too. And another thing going for it is that flaring, even when shooting in direct sunlight or direct light sources, pretty minimal and a lot better than some of the other lenses I've used before too. And so if you are someone who likes to shoot directly into sunlight or with more direct light sources, bouncing at the lens, this will be a pretty good choice as it keeps it down to a minimum. So that's been my experience using this lens, the things I think it works well for, my personal uses for it, and some of the areas that I think it kind of falls short at. Keep in mind though, at $100, this still offers really good value in terms of the overall picture quality that you can get out of it, and many of the issues that I do bring up are kind of expected with something that is priced this low perhaps with the exception of that chromatic aberration. And so if you understand the pros and cons of this lens, understand its best uses for it, I think this could be a cool lens to add to your kit. Thanks again for tuning into this video. Don't forget you can use those links down below if you wanna learn more about the gear I use or this lens or that podcast I shared with you earlier. And until the next one,